All right. We'll, we'll get going here. Uh, my name is Jeff Leon. Um, I'm the creative director of Oligo Scan. Uh, basically, we're testing for heavy metals and minerals via spectrophotometry. So we're going to get into that and kind of what we're looking at. Um, first off, I just want to start with water. Uh, this is a screenshot of a really great website called EWG. You can put your zip code in and see all the contaminations in the water. Um, I pulled this for Plano and 19 different contaminants above the um, above the recommended levels. Uh, did anybody here bring a shower filter with them for the hotel? I'm the only weird one. Okay. Yeah. So I I bring a shower filter with me every time I go to the hotel and I unscrew the thing. You probably don't like that, but real easy. You you uh, because otherwise you're you know whoa. <laughs> Not that the system doesn't like me. Um, she, oh, you know, you know what? My uh, thing was stuck. Okay. Anyway, um, people need to understand that when you shower, you're absorbing a lot of that chemicals, toxins, um, whatever it might be, especially chlorine and fluoride from the shower. So it's not just what you drink. It's actually what you bathe in as well. Um, you know, atrazine is a big one. Uh, this is the chemical, the pesticide that changes gender in frogs. Um, it's you can see it's very high in the Midwest uh, on the bread basket. Um, so this stuff is not good. You do not want to be drinking this or showering this. Um, this is glyphosate, also really big. Um, obviously, it's correlated with the agricultural belt. Um, this is the new one that I just pulled from this morning. This is uh, the Forever Chemicals um, that they finally just you know agreed that are toxic and. You can see how um, these are clustered around chemical plants. I know that because we have a place in Wilmington, North Carolina, and there's a company that dumps um, right into the Cape Fear River. They've been doing so since the 60s. And you can see how high the, P the PFAs are in North Carolina. So it's really a big issue. Um, you know, anytime you see these chemicals, you're going to see cancer rates super high. Um, so I start with water because water is the baseline, right? It's sacred. Um, this is an amazing website called findaspring.org. It pulls up a map of springs, hot springs and cold springs throughout the U.S. Um, I use this every time I travel to see if there's any springs near me. I have two five-gallon buckets to fill up. Um, gets me through at least a week and a half, but still pretty good. Um, so I start with water because it's, it's sacred and we need to at least get that in check for all this other stuff to make sense and to even work. Um, so the agenda today, who am I and my experience, we'll talk about that. Um, Oligo scan, spectrophotometry, why it matters, how it's different. Um, and then the top 11 trends I'm seeing in test reports. So if I go kind of fast, I apologize. And when I get passionate about this stuff, I just kind of talk fast and I get through this, but I'll try to do my best. Um, so who am I? Um, well, my father, my godfather, and my grandfather started Douglas Lab back in the early 80s. Uh, they were pioneers in the judicial uh, industry. Um, so I've been around this stuff my whole life. Uh, I used to get boxes of supplements under the Christmas tree. When I was like 16. Uh, yeah, I've been playing around with Russian biofeedback devices since I was really young. I still do that. It's really incredible. Um, so I've been around this stuff my whole life. Um, this is just really what I know. Um, who am I? Um, we'll talk maybe a little bit about my journey, but, uh, I'm a hunter. I, I, I really believe that we've lost connection with our food. Um, you know, 90 Five percent of the of the meat that we consume comes from processing plant slaughterhouse. That animal goes to the slaughterhouse and it's stressed and excretes cortisol. We then eat that meat. We are eating a low vibration meat. Um, part of my journey has been to source locally local food, and that's led me to becoming a hunter and actually processing the animals myself, and then basically utilizing all of the animals. Um, it's really what I believe in, and it really ties into a lot of what we're going to be talking today. Um, so while we don't have the processing thing figured out, um, the next best thing is at least to get your meat from farmers markets, uh, farmers markets and, and ranches and farmers that, that raise these animals, right? Um, I probably believe I was a native American in a past life. I really resonate with what the native Americans, how they valued the land, the water it was sacred. They lived in conjunction with nature. Um, and my dream is to start a bison ranch in the next couple of years so I can source my own meat and I will be field harvesting that bison. So they die on the land, no slaughterhouse, no, you know, no trailer to slaughterhouse and stress. I want them to die on the land. The blood goes back to the soil where it started. Um, and at least it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a different experience. Um, 
eating my own meat that I hunt, it's a, it's a, every, every time I eat it, it's, it's a different experience. And I really believe this is a missing crucial part of our, our food. We need to get closer to the food, not just eating mindlessly, but being connected with the food that we eat. And it's, it's honor and have reverence for that life. Um, promise this will make sense. So this is nature superfood. Um, beef liver, uh, that's what I eat on a typical night. No, I'm kidding. Um, that's, that's from one of my harvests, but liver is one of nature's superfoods. And we'll get into this more. Um, okay. Uh, my grandfather always taught me to practice what I preach. So, um, I'm going to exemplify today that, you know, at first, after I graduated from college, my illegal scan report was really bad. Uh, this is from binge drinking. This is from substance abuse, lack of sleep, stress, you name it. I was a frat. I was, you know, just young and stupid. Um, but when I scanned myself for the first time, uh, it was a wake up call for me. And after about eight years of really dialing it in, I've almost completely normalized my test report. Um, and we're going to talk about a lot more of this soon. You can see that anytime you were carrying excess fat, you're going to have your, your toxic load is going to be bigger because toxins are stored in the fat. So it's actually a really crucial thing to get in shape. A lot of people can't lose the weight. And we're going to talk about reasons why I believe so. I think some of it has to do with hormones. Some of it has to do with iodine and the thyroid. Um, but we'll talk more about that. But anyway, periodic table of elements. I'm going to be referencing this a lot. Um, minerals and metals are elements. Elements have relationships with one another, antagonist synergist relationships. So a lot of times we need to look at when we see the, uh, toxicities, we have to understand what mineral can be correlated to that toxicity because they have these, these relationships with one another. So the Oligo scan, it's an intracellular test for heavy metals, minerals, and trace elements via spectrophotometry. So the full visible light spectrum, uh, the report includes 21 minerals, 15 heavy metals, six vitamins, non-invasive, takes about 30 seconds. You do need to know your blood type. Um, the, each blood type has different protein antigens in them. And similar to the elements, they have a different atomic emission spectra. So you need to know your blood type. Um, for clinics that see, see patients that don't know their blood type, easiest way to determine it is an LDOM card kit. They're like eight bucks. It's quick. Uh, it takes about five minutes. Uh, we've been around for 12 years, um, have over 250 clinics in the US. Um, and I've been doing this for probably the past three years. Um, I didn't want to just go right into the family business. Um, I went on to the real world. I wanted to get real life experience. I was moving shipping containers for three years in New York City. Um, <clears throat> I was loving it. I had to make good money. I was doing well. Um, I had a dream one night living in New York that I needed to go to the jungle. So I, this is during COVID, uh, right at the very beginning, I went down to Peru, sat with ayahuasca for 10 days, and I realized that I was a cog in a machine, living in a concrete jungle and no connection with anything, nature. Um, so that led me down this path of quitting my job, left New York City, took a little bit of time to understand like what it is I wanted to do. And I read The Carnivore Code by Paul Saladino and the light bulb went off. So I did that for 35 days. Um, my metals completely normalized. Uh, my minerals, my vitamins spiked. It was incredible. Brain fog gone. Got down to 6.5% body fat. Um, and that really led me on my journey to getting closer to uh, ranchers and farmers, where the meat's coming from, right? I wanted to keep going, get closer, getting into hunting and so forth. So I, I was in Hawaii actually working on a ranch, hunting wild rams and processing them for the, the owner. And it's a great life. I said, I could just sit back here and, and just do this forever. And it'd be nice in, in Hawaii, you know? Uh, but I realized too, that I wasn't really serving my purpose. I wasn't helping people. So that's when I moved back to the mainland and started with Oligo Scan three years ago, my dad's business. All right, let's get into the good stuff. So, um, spectral photometry. So, I'm going to read this, and I'll, this is as complicated as it's going to get, but I think it's important to kind of understand this, how what we're doing. So, spectral photometry, it's about absorption or reflection of light, okay? Every beam of light is quantized into photons, which you can count. As multiple photons are, of light are projected, there's a consistent and measurable amount of frequency creating momentum. Each element has its own atomic emission spectra, so when the beam of light hits your skin, it starts measuring, it has to penetrate at least one cell membrane. Otherwise, it, you don't get a measurement. So it's, it's all about how much light is being reflected and absorbed in the tissue of the skin. Okay? This, is not, you know, this is not new. This has been around for a while. Uh, Otto Warburg won the uh, physiology prize in 1931. Um, this is the spectrum of light that we're, measuring, that we're shining in the skin. 
Um, every metal and mineral is an element. Every element has a different atomic emission spectra. And you can see these atomic emission spectras here. Um, this is just showing you these metals have different colors, right? So what am I testing? Testing the hand. Why am I testing the hand? Well, the hand, one, is the major excretion point in the body. Hand, feet, underarm, scalp. Um, number two, the pigment is the same across all races and ethnicities. So I'm testing the hand, right? I can still test somebody. Let's say with somebody, 92 year old with a, you know, with dental amalgams for you know, 25 years, right? That's in the mouth. I test the hand, the mercury is through the roof, silver is through the roof. Well, I'm not testing the mouth, just the hand. Another example, gandolinium. M from MRIs, it's a contrast agent, local injection, testing the hand, see the gandolinium through the roof. This tells me that the cells are communicating with one another, right? We're not testing the brain, we're not testing the liver, we're not testing the kidneys. The only way to do that would be to take a biopsy. But we're still seeing correlation. It's a baseline for metals and minerals in the, in the tissue. Um, what's, I hear you, let's talk about this. So this is just going to show you that this, we're looking at intracellular. Blood, hair, and urine are extracellular. So blood is looking at what's in circulation. Right? It's a transport system. As metals come into our body through the air, through the water, through the food, they come into the bloodstream, and the body's first defense is push the metals from the bloodstream to the peripheral tissue. Right? Because the body wants to stay in homeostasis. It has to keep that baseline. So looking at heavy metals in the blood, um, to me, it's, it's missing the whole picture. It's missing what's short. Uh, hair test, looking at the past three months of excretion. Um, thing about a hair test is the more you're holding on to, the less is going to be excreted in the hair. And the hair is not a major excretion pathway for metals. You can pick up anything in the hair, most things, but it's not the way we get rid of metals. Okay? Um, urine. You know, provoked or unprovoked, looking at what the body's able to excrete. It's been the gold standard for a while. Um, all of these tests are different. This is not a replacement test. Um, this is another vector that we're looking at. It's, it's giving us more insight. And it's all about clues and being the investigator, which I'll probably say again, but that's the truth of it. We need to understand why somebody is high in metals. Um, this is what the test report looks like. This is what the software looks like. You know, your patient list will be in there and then create a patient card for the person, then you scan them. Um, again, mineral interactions, you can see all the different interactions. And that's what we're going to talk about next. Um, this is a questionnaire. So I, you know, I, I, I train a lot of our practitioners in clinics and I encourage them to use this, have them fill this out before the test because, you know, I have, I have clinics that show me these test reports and ask me, you know, what's going on here? What's going on here? I tell them, I got to look at the questionnaire because I have no idea anything about that person's life, you can't just look at the report and tell you what's wrong. I gotta understand how they got there. I gotta look at the root cause. So this is great. And I'm actually gonna be expanding this um, because I don't have too many chemicals on here. And I really believe that these air fresheners, um, makeup, uh, shampoos, conditioners, I mean, it's, it's hard to get in an Uber anymore because nine, you know, 50% of them have these air fresheners. It's like, it's like a little juice in a bottle hanging on the seat. And I'm like, you're breathing that in. It's terrible. You don't want that. It's synthetic. And we'll talk about how I see that, or I think I see it in this report. So I've tested over a thousand people. Um, I put this, had the, felt the reason to put this together after A4M two years ago. Um, and this, what we're going to talk about next, next is actually most common test reports that I'm seeing. You know, my kind of analysis. So We'll start off with a perfect test. This is, a, this is an example of a perfect test. You can see that these are the minerals. Um, on the left is deficient, on the right is excess. We want the general pattern to be like a DNA helix starting at the top all the way to the bottom, right to left to right to left to right to left to right to left. To left. Uh, that's just based on how these minerals are listed. And green is good. Green is within one standard deviation. Yellow is gonna be with two standard deviations to the left or right, so excess or deficient. And then red is gonna be three standard deviations. Um, we always look for reds first, obviously. Yellows are in between. Greens are generally good. Um, you don't want mineral, you don't want everything on the left and you don't want everything on the right because these minerals have interactions with one another. So you want there to be this spiral. Now, when I tested um, this lady at A4M, um, I kind of had a feeling before I tested her, she was going to be perfect. The way she presented herself, her energy, um, I think stress is probably one of, can manifest significantly in this report and I can prove it. Um, but stress is something that we don't think about. Um, this lady had, like, I couldn't tell 
she was stressed at all. Her demeanor was perfect. So it was interesting to see that to reflect it. Um, and you can see even her metals were slightly elevated, but her minerals were almost perfect. Um, vitamins really good here. So the metals, um, you'll see that you'll see normal is going to be green. High minus or high plus is going to be the yellow. Um, and then the excess is going to be red. So we generally want to shoot for um, on this dark line, this column in the middle. We want to be on the left hand side of that. That's generally pretty good. Uh, I've never seen a test with all greens. Um, never. My, I'm, I'm hoping to be the guinea pig. I'm going to get a pig for a lot of this stuff. I'm hoping to, that's my goal is to try to get all greens. It's going to be really difficult because living in a metropolitan area is tough. Um, but TBD on that one. Uh, so anyway, we want to see below this, this bold line. Okay. Um, all right, let's, let's, now let's start, let's get to the good stuff now. So this is an example of somebody that is a vegan. Okay. Um, you know, and I used to be, I, I, when I was in New York city, I was definitely more vegan leaning, um, to biomagnetism course, really interesting stuff. He says that, you know, there's different viruses and bacteria and meat and it's interesting, but when I test people and I test a lot of people, I see this almost all the time when they tell me they don't eat meat, that they're mineral deficient. You can see the zinc is also super deficient, copper, very deficient. Um, and if I go to her minerals, I'm sorry, if I go to her vitamins, you can see, you're, you guys see this all the time, just straight in the middle on the left-hand side. Um, when you see the B9 low like this, B9 is folate, right? Um, this can be a sign of the MA, MTHFR genetic mutation. Um, it's interesting because when I first tested myself, I was really low in B9 like this. Um, but you have to always ask yourself, where are you getting the B9, right? You, that can be the case for anything. Where are you getting the copper? Where are you getting the zinc? Where are you getting the B9? What are the highest sources of copper, zinc, and B9, and B6, and vitamin A, and B12? Liver, organ meats. Um, so I was able to reverse this. And I don't know if I have the, the gene mutation. I've never tested myself. I probably should. But from simply eating a lot of organ meats, my, I've increased mine dramatically. But the problem with folic acid is 44% of the population has this mutation. If you have this mutation, you can't process folic acid. And where does folic acid go from? Well, it's a synthetic form of folate and it's found in processed foods, grains, um, anything processed, right? They fortify it, they add it. So for 44% of the population, they can't metabolize or methylate this folic acid. It causes OCD, ACD, depression, anxiety, all kinds of issues. Gary Brecker talks a lot about this really great check him out if you haven't heard him speak about this but anyway i can i think that sometimes tell if they have a mutation um, and the best way to do it is to ask um so i see this a lot in vegans just deficiency across the board see there's nothing coming on the right there's no balance it's all shifted towards the left um okay third case now this is this one's really interesting um this is the most complicated topic on the illegal scan and what it is is it's showing us that this person has um a copper zinc blockade. Okay. Copper and zinc are very related. They're antagonist synergies for themselves. So zinc will chelate copper and copper will chelate zinc. And it's this very fine dance relationship that the two have. Now, my mentor, John Gamble, a naturopath, he's been testing people with the Oligo scan for the past seven years. Should have brought a book. Should I do have a book? Um, yeah. So he's been my mentor. I've learned a lot from him. Um, this is an incredible book. It's Toxicity, deficiency, and, deficiency and infection. Mastering Chronic Disease. Um, you purchased this, the ebook on, online. Anyway, I learned this from him and it's fascinating. So, copper can be an excess. And copper is kind of a hype word right now. Um, you know, people got, you got people talking um, copper toxicity, like Dr. John Gamble. You got people saying everybody's copper deficient, um, like Alfonso Monzo and Jason Hommel. And I think the truth is, is always in the middle somewhere. I think there can be copper toxicity. Um, you can be passed down from parents, generational copper toxicity can be in copper IVs, can be from chlorinated swimming pools, um, it can be from pesticide exposure, um, it can come from fluoride leaching the copper out of the pipes into the drinking water. I think fluoride probably has um, something to do with that and probably the chemicals and pesticides that are found in the municipal water itself. So it's interesting. So I think I, you can make the case for copper toxicity, um, but what happens is the excess copper is basically displacing the zinc to the peripheral tissue. So this looks like the person is high in zinc, but it's actually a false positive. It's actually the copper displacing the zinc to the peripheral tissue, which is why it's showing up high. So the solution for this person would, according to John Gamble, would be to 
supplement with zinc to help chelate the excess copper um, and to actually restore the zinc and to get it back to where it needs to be. Um, I recently talked to Molly Robbins. He's the founder of the Root Cause Protocol. And I saw him a couple weeks ago at the Dennis, the IAMOMT show. And we were talking and I was like, you know, morally like, you know, happens like we need copper. It mobilizes iron. So copper is super important. And you see this, it's like, what's going on? And he's, he told me, he's like, you should start thinking like, maybe the excess copper is related to the liver function. And I think that's a great point because where do you get, what has the highest source of copper? Liver. Where are a lot of xenoestrogens and plastics and chemicals and pesticides stored in the body? The liver. So I think for this, perhaps it's that the liver is compromised, the liver is probably blocked, and the excess copper is accumulating probably from chemical and pesticide exposure, and that it's displacing the zinc. So, you know, a lot of this stuff, we have to like just ask the questions and really, you know, it's not in textbooks how to, how to learn this stuff. So, you know, it's pretty new, but that's my hypothesis with that. Um, you can see the fluoride slightly elevated again, that, that could be um, the leading, you know, that could be involved with what's going on here. So that's a complicated topic. Um, now you'll see what's interesting is this third page basically is it has a bunch of in well a bunch of these physiologies here, right? So enzyme state, metabolism, tissue repair, hormones. I mean, now these are just indexes based on the minerals that correspond to that particular physiology. So you can see that zinc is so important; it's literally in seven out of ten of these physiologies. So anytime you have the zinc that's out of whack, you're going to see this third page look all red. Um, okay, next one, obese patient. So this is a classic, you know, this person was carrying at least 60, 50, 70 pounds of excess weight fat, right? So anytime you see the low chromium, you're, it's, it's insulin resistance. Um, you know, it's blood sugar, but it's metabolic dysfunction. Now the high boron is interesting, okay? Boron is the hormone element. It's necessary for steroid hormone metabolism. Elevated boron doesn't mean they're boron intoxicated. It means the body accumulates it to improve steroid synthesis because the fatty tissue in an obese person likely has metabolic syndrome, has an inflamed fat cells, and they're producing bad estrogens, okay? So it's interesting to see those two related. Um, but you can see anytime the body is carrying 50 pounds of weight, putting excess stress on the body, and these minerals are all over the place, okay? This just signifies imbalance. Um, mercury toxicity, I see this all the time. Uh, people over the age of 40, 50, um, that had a mouth fillings. Um, it's extremely insidious. It's very toxic. Um, you know, when I see this, I ask the person if you had a mouth filling nine out of 10 times. Yes. There was the only one other time they say no. And that's like really hard for me. I'm like, okay, where could this person have got mercury? Do you eat a lot of fish? No. Did you ever play with mercury as a kid? Oh yeah. I used to play with, break the thermometers and play with it in my hands. Well, there you go. You know? Um, so you, again, you gotta be the investigator and really ask. Um, this one's interesting. Uh, this is just a hypothesis, but lithium. Um, you know, a lot of people wear these smartwatches. Um, you know, they have lithium batteries. You know, things wear and tear. Is the lithium getting into the body via the skin? I don't know. It's interesting. Um, I just personally don't believe that you should be having an electromagnetic radiating thing sitting so close to your vein and artery in your hand. I mean, why do we have to track everything? I just think it's bananas, but um, I, I think it's probably a correlation there. Um, now, another one I want to talk about is the phosphorus. So phosphorus, you can see a third metal down. This one's low. Um, phosphorus is the mitochondria. It's the energy of the cell. It's ATP of the cell. So when you see low phosphorus, it's four things. Adrenal stress, usually that's the most common. Your dental amalgam filling, alcohol, chronic alcohol, um, or parasite. Now, parasites are really interesting, and they usually manifest in phosphorus. Another way to determine if you have a parasite is asking somebody, do you have sugar cravings at night? That's the easiest way, especially around full moon. Um, this is a little bit of a tangent, but I'm going to say it because it's really, really powerful. Um, there's a saying, spoonful of sugar keeps the, keeps, helps the medicine go down. Mary Poppins, right? Spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. What's the medicine? The medicine, in my opinion, was turpentine. Um, turpentine is from pine trees. Um, and you can find it in a hardware store. You don't want to buy that turpentine. You want to buy the oil, the spirits of turpentine. Okay. Um, this is my medical advice, by the way. Uh, it's 
there's a there's a doctor called Dr. Jen- Jennifer Daniels. She talks all about turpentine. She went to Harvard. Um, a lot of podcast information out there. But what's really interesting is when I was just in Big Bend last month, and I was driving from Big Bend to um, Balmoria, and we passed through Fort Davis, this old medical hospital, beautiful area. And um, my girlfriend and I went into the old museum, and you know we're looking through. It's like a hospital recreated, and there's all kinds of little like um, you know prescriptions and what they did this, this ailment, this this condition, this is the ailment. I was going through these things, and I see, I forget, I think it was like something with the lungs, or it was like a, a bird or something, and I flip the card, and I see mix oil molasses with spirits of turpentine, just forgotten knowledge, and um, for parasites, it's amazing. I personally, um, I do about, I do this about once a month, every now and then, whenever I feel like I need it, because we get exposed to parasites all the time. Pets, uh, the biggest way. Um, pets, you know, food pork, all kinds of stuff. But you get three sugar cubes and you get teaspoon of turpentine and you drop it on the sugar cubes and then you eat it and then you chew it up and you drink water. And I've been doing this for about two years now. And on the sugar cubes, yep, it's cut. One teaspoon of turpentine on the sugar cubes, on three sugar cubes stacked. You, You take it, chew it, drink water. I kid you not, like I've done like two, three day fasts. I don't, you don't get hungry. You immediately get clear in the mind and you don't get hungry. And that makes me question, why Like, do we need to be eating so much? And is that hunger truly our hunger or is that a parasite that's controlling the mind? It's fascinating stuff. Look up Dr. Jennifer Daniels um, if, if you're more interested in that. But I, that's all I'll say about that. The phosphorus is key. So one of those four things. This is an amalgam filling. You can see um, mercury, cadmium, barium I see a lot. Uh, we don't test for strontium, but um, barium I see a lot in amalgam fillings. Now, you can see the impact that the vitamin D on this test, right? The mercury prevents the vitamin D from getting into the cell. And I tested Dr. Mercola um, at the biohacking show last, last June and um, came out of my booth. We were talking, I, I tested him, tested his foot, tested his hand, same report, told him that wasn't going to be the case. Um, long story short, scanned him, low in vitamin D. He's like, I don't believe this. I have the best D, blood D, serum D, out of anybody at the show, 150, there's no way my D is low. I was like, hard to, hard to argue with Dr. Mercola, like my idol, you know, one of my idols. Yeah. But left, I was like, oh, that was fun. Came back, first guy in my booth before, like right when we got there. He's like, I know Jeff, I know why the vitamin D is low. I'm like, why? He's like, because I had an amalgam filling, and I know they did a bad job removing it, and it's, pre- it's preventing the D from getting into the cell. We talked for like, you know, I don't know, 30 minutes, and he's a great guy, but I see this all the time, and the mercury will, will block the vitamin D receptors. It'll block iodine. It'll block selenium, and it can block phosphorus, and it can also block zinc. So mercury is the most insidious metal. Um, now, when it comes to mercury, there's there's this thing called OSR, oxidative stress relief, by Dr. Boyd Haley. Um, they did these studies, and they found that it really worked in people that had acute intoxication. So like one to three months, like these coal miners, that's where they did the experiment. Coal miners went down under the ground, mined a bunch of coal, came out, had tons of mercury. They gave them the OSR, and it was able to get rid of it. However, for people that have had amalgams for 20, 30 years, the OSR doesn't work. It doesn't get, it can't get it. it, it, it people, and there's a Facebook I grew about this. It's very interesting to, to read the comments. Um, doesn't work. So I'm going to talk about the zeo charge in a second after these other ones. But um, OSR is an interesting compound to look into. Um, I think the zeolite's a little bit more gradual. We'll get into. I promise I'll come back to that. Um, but I thought I'd mention it. FDA also made it illegal to buy in the U.S. So you got to go to Ireland. Um, iodine deficiency. I see this one in like seven out of ten people. Um, so iodine is affected by the halogens. Halogens are in column 17 of the periodic table. Halogens include fluoride, chlorine, bromide, okay? Fluoride and chlorine are in drinking water, municipal drinking water. Um, fluoride, hydrofluorosilic acid, is basically a byproduct of the phosphate fertilizer in the aluminum industry. So instead of, you know, spending money to dispose of it naturally in the ground, they sell it to municipalities who then chlorinate our water. And it's an abomination, honestly. Um, you know, toothpaste, fluoride toothpaste, I can, I can see what people use for to do this on the scan. And, you know, on the thing, it says it's swallowed called poison control. 
yet they're putting like four times the amount of that in the drinking water. It like makes no sense. But the reason, in my opinion, a lot of people are deficient in iodine, which is super important for the thyroid and hormones and weight loss, is because of the of the fluoride, of the chlorine. So swimming pools, uh, you just don't want to go in chlorinated sleep. I mean, it's it's really bad. I mean, I I go to a gym in Austin, and I literally have to like hold my breath when I go through the swimming pool because it's like a gas chamber. Um, now the third one is bromide. Bromide comes from uh, processed vegetable oil. Um, it's also found in like carpets and upholstery. They spray it as a flame retardant, but processed food. So you know, processed food and municipal water. Most people eat some of that, um, and I, I believe it's it's leading to the iodine deficiency. Um, and iodine is the master mineral, in my opinion. Um, iodine, they found in pregnant women, iodine, if they're iodine deficient, it can impact the IQ by 15 to 30 points, 15 to 30 points. And how many people are iodine deficient? How many people shower in, in municipal water? So back to my first point about shower culture. I mean, you know, it's, it's a necessity for the chlorine, for the chlorine alone. Um, also going to affect the vitamin D receptors. Um, the, the, the halogens. Um, so, you know, you can see column 17, they're all right next to one another. Fluoride, chlorine, bromine, iodine. And then you can see aluminum and silica, which we're going to get to next, right next to one another. So, yeah, low vitamin D. I see this a lot in people. Um, I have this hypothesis that I think the more metals you have, probably the easier you burn. I think it could also be, um, you know, where your ancestry is from. But um, let's talk about aluminum. <laughs> aluminum is one of the most prevalent heavy metals that I see. Uh, it's everywhere. It's in pots and pans. It's in anti-acids, Pepsid AC, Zantac, um, aluminum foil, aluminum cans, right? You have like Coke in a can. Hi, you know, that acid is leaching uh, the aluminum into the drink. Um, antiperspirant is huge. You are literally, antiperspirant, anti-sweat. That's what it means, right? You apply that to the underarm, you're literally blocking the lymphatic system with the metal, and then the metals have nowhere to go, so they accumulate in the breast. And I believe it's one of the main reasons why um, women in their you know early, later life are developing breast cancer. It could be antiperspirant. It, the lymphatic system is completely blocked. Easiest way to see if your lymphatic system is blocked is by checking the bottom of your feet. It should be smooth. If they're dry and cracked, it's a sign the lymphatic system is blocked. Um, but aluminum is found everywhere. Tap water, they add it. The municipalities are also adding this um, as antifungal. Um, it, it's really, it's in processed foods. Uh, it's, it's found everywhere. Um, aluminum is going to affect the first six minerals on this chart, particularly silica. It's the direct antagonist relationship. And I've tried, I went down this whole rabbit hole. Of, um, this guy, Dr. Dennis Krauss, um, his mother was super old, developing Alzheimer's. And he had this theory of making silica water. You can buy the raw ingredients and you make it. And so I did this for like four months. I was drinking like all the silica water for four months. And I loved, I loved it. It made the water taste really good. Didn't bring up my silica at all. And that's but the aluminum was a little bit high. So it, it prevents it from, from getting into the cell. Um, I think with aluminum, the, the biggest thing is just to make sure you're breaking a sweat. Because that is how we break down aluminum. We break down into salts and then we sweat it out of the skin. So if you see somebody with aluminum like this, you ask them, do you break a sweat? Nine out of 10 times, no. And that is a, that is a, that is a flag. So I don't know if the silica water works or not. I only did it for four months. Um, my, my aluminum wasn't that high. My silica wasn't that low. But I wanted to just see if it moved the needle. Um, it's interesting. Maybe look into it. A lot of people love it. Um, Fiji has the highest silica water or highest silica content of any water. Um, however, it's in plastic. And we're going to get to that in a second, the plastics. But aluminum is a really big one to, to focus on. Um, you know, EMFs, right? They basically are allowing these metals to cross the blood-brain barrier. And I believe that most aluminum goes right to the brain. I do believe that it's one of the main, major sources of Alzheimer's. And we really have to be careful with this um, because aluminum is everywhere. So the biggest thing with aluminum is just make sure you're breaking a sweat. Sauna is key. And the zeo charges we're going to talk about. Um, gadolinium, this one's fascinating. This is one of the reasons it, it well, this is one, one way that this validated this illegal, I, I validated this illegal scam myself. Gadolinium is a rare earth element. Uh, this is not found in your day to day unless you're drinking sewage from a hospital. Um, literally. Um, so it's from the MRI, the contrast, and it's a local injection. 
They do the contrast. I test people. I see the gadolinium high. I ask them, have you had an MRI with contrast? Nine out of 10 times, yes. It's the one person that doesn't say yes that I have to grill and say, do you have any surgeries? Yeah, I did. Oh, did you get an MRI for that? Oh, yeah, that one thing. There you go. So you have to dig a little. But gadolinium, um, now that there's another Facebook group about this. It's very interesting. Um, highly toxic. You don't want this in the body. It's very hard to get rid of. So MRIs, no, no, in my opinion. Um, avoid at all costs. Tin is an interesting one. Um, don't have enough evidence to say it, but you know the shots. I think have a lot of tin in them. Um, I also don't know what else they have in them, but I I see the tin high in people that have had some shots. Um, cadmium is another one. Um, this person had cadmium, but this is off the Richter scale. I mean, this is super high. This is a toxicity, right? And uh, I had to ask this guy, um, like, where, did, where do you think this came from? He grew up in D.C. as a young kid. Um, you know, he told me his diet was very standard. Um, so I believe that over time, he probably built up a cadmium deficiency, uh, not having enough zinc in his diet, but also just living in a metropolitan area. I've also seen cadmium this high. And it was from one of my friends. And he told me that he literally lived five miles from one of the biggest phosphate fertilizer mines in Florida. And his cadmium is off the chart, off the freaking chart. Um, cadmium is tough. Cadmium is found in fruits and vegetables, unfortunately, because of the soil. Like I said, the phosphate fertilizers. What people need to understand is that, like, yeah, fruits and vegetables, you know, if I, well, if I grew my own first off, which I'm in the process of doing, but if I, if I could rely on the soil and actually, like, know that it was grown the right way, I trust it. I would eat a lot more of them. But the reality is most of these Fruits and vegetables are coming from big ag and they're being sold in supermarkets. And there's a lot of greenwashing going on about organic, what it actually means. And are they growing these things in bio sludge? Are they actually, you know, you're allowed to spray right next to the plant. You can't spray on the plant, but you can spray right next to it. Well, I mean, come on. So the tough thing is that oh, cadmium is, is, is it's in the soil and it's in the fruits and vegetables. Dark chocolate, cadmium, is some of these, there was a consumer report that did an uh, article about this off the charts in some of these chocolates, lead and cadmium. Um, also from living in a metropolitan area, unfortunately, it's from cigarette smoke, it's from automobile exhaust fumes, it's from air pollution, um, but it's a nasty one. Uh, xenoestrogen, um, we don't want this in the body, it will impact chromium, which again is important for blood sugar metabolism, it'll affect zinc, um, and again, zinc is one of the most important minerals. Long COVID, we see deficiency across the board, toxicity. Both things probably leads to, you know, um, struggle in your immune system. Um, you know, if you're deficient and you're toxic, you know, you're breeding ground for infection. Um, now, this one is fascinating, okay? Tested this lady about four months ago in Florida. She, she goes, you know, I'm overweight. I can't lose the weight. I'm doing everything under the sun. Can't lose the weight. I know my hormones are messed up. So I was, okay, see your test report. I'm like, wow, interesting. So the left-hand side, minerals, Pretty on par for somebody that's, you know, 245, 10, a little bit overweight. She can't access fat. But the antimony, now where does antimony come from? It comes from plastic. And it comes from drinking bottled water. She told me she's drank bottled water for the past 10 years on her ranch in Florida. Florida gets hot, a lot of sun. Sun, heat, leeches, the plastic sitting out. You know, you buy these bottled water, real thin plastic, you know, you don't know if that's sitting on a shipping shipping crate for 10 hours, two days. Some of these construction workers, it's sitting in the sun all day. You get an antimony. Now, antimony is going to basically cause a lot of hormonal issues. Uh, it's going to affect the thyroid. So she wonders why she can't lose the weight. She's got a toxic metal that's literally affecting her thyroid and her hormones. So it makes it hard. Um, so really interesting. Uh, yeah. Six months, four days, six months. What? Uh, people that experience COVID for an extended amount of time after they get sick initially, yeah. Um, and that's just from some people that I've tested that usually, again, you're going to see deficiency in um, toxicity. Yeah. So people that are dealing with compromised immune systems. Um, skip the video because it let me. Sure. So this is feedback from one of our clinics um, in Denver. Thanks for sharing. After three years, do you have any feedback on the accuracy of this device? 
If I had, a, I'm gonna read this. If I had a practice, I would still be using it to motivate my clients to detoxify. It's very effective motivation. In regards to accuracy, I can say it's 50% correct, 30% close, and 20% off. But such is life. Nothing works for everyone. I assume the difference is where toxins are stored, how fast the body handles different toxins, and how your DNA supports different detox pathways. I, I share this quote with every single practitioner that thinks about adding the Omega Scan to the practice because I, I love this quote. I stand by it 100%. And it, it's true, right? It's true. Where the toxins are stored, how fast the body handles different toxins in the, in the DNA. Because genetics definitely plays a role in this. Um, it, it really does. But, you know, we're not testing the brain. We don't know how much aluminum is going there, right? But we're getting a baseline and we're seeing that. So I like this quote a lot. Um, so what do we do? So let's see, I got like five minutes. So I'll, we'll talk about this. So I've tried everything under the sun. Um, the only thing I really haven't dove a lot into is homeopathics. Um, Dr. John Gable, he's in Australia. Um, he de- uses homeopathics in his practice, has a lot of success with it. I would love to do it. I just don't know the dosing quite yet. Um, so I, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so he's using that to help chelate the metal. Chelate the metals, right? That's the big thing talking about. So um, I think there's value there. I just have personally haven't tried it. Um, been searching under the sun. How do we get rid of these metals, right? I think that this, and I got introduced to um, Jeff Hoyt from Zeli Labs. Um, I love this stuff. Um, I love it because he's not only the most humble, down to earth, simple guy in the world. But he puts a lot of education out there. He, his goal is to just make this known about how this stuff works. Basically, what's happening is there's three levels of detox, according to him. Level three is basically like organs, like deep, deep tissue, right? Um, level two is the peripheral, which is what we're measuring. And then level one is bloodstream. So, you know, mercury amalgam fillings, the body pushes it after 20 years of amalgam. The body's going to push the metal very, very deep. Why? Because it wants to get it a hell away from us. The body doesn't care about tomorrow. The body cares about staying alive today. So it's going to do anything in its power to, to get those metals away from the bloodstream because that's homeostasis. So in doing so, right, these, these uh, mercury will accumulate very deep in the body. Um, now, the body is only going to detox if it has the energy to detox. You can't put a gun to the body and say, get rid of all this mercury right now if you had an amalgam filling. It would kill you if you did that because that mercury would literally be too much for your body to handle. So that's why it doesn't do that. So that's why you got to be careful with things like, you know, chelating with, in my opinion, EDTA and stuff like that because it can sometimes make you more mineral deficient and it can bring too much up and cause a hurt summary reaction. So I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying you got to really know. You got to really, you know, consider everything. But I like the zeolite because the zeolite helps the body detox the metals at its own pace. So it's only going to get rid of what it can. And um, I'm going to show you a, a before and after in a second here. Um, but I really like this stuff. So look it up. Jeff's got a lot of great stuff out there. Um, I really like the zeolite. I want to show you um, this picture. You can see how it works Um This is from one of our clinics in Michigan that used four scoops of zeolite, zeolite for four months. He had a amalgam filling. I think he's like 65. Um, and you can see how tremendous that mercury and silver detox is and how much you got rid of. Now, what's interesting is the zinc got higher. So what Jeff talks about is that like, so we're testing level two. We're testing the peripheral tissue. Now, we're not, you know, we're not testing deep tissue storage, right? And my hypothesis is, and to kind of circle back to that quote that I showed you, sometimes I'll test people like autistic children and their test report will look really good. And I'm like shocked. I'm like, this doesn't make sense. You would expect to see the aluminum mercury off the chart. And I don't know. It's, it's really interesting. Um, I believe that sometimes these toxicities can be, can be deeper than that, right? Like maybe the, maybe the vaccine went right to the brain, right? Maybe it went right to the liver. I don't know. But sometimes these toxicities can be hidden and they, they can be hiding at the level three. We're testing level two. So it's not showing up. So when zeolite, like Jeff, will, Jeff explains this, that like sometimes the metals actually get higher before they get lower on the illegal skin retest. And that's because it's pulling the metals deeper, bringing them up. We see the higher result and people freak out. They're like, oh my gosh, like, you know, what? this isn't working. But in reality, it's just grabbing it from deep and then it's got to go out. So this is an example of this high zinc that um, you see how the zeolite actually pulled some of the excess deep copper to the peripheral and 
it, and by doing so, it's displacing the zinc even more. Um, Jeff would say to just keep taking the zeolite until this eventually normalizes. Now, that's that's my thing with zeolite. I like the zeolite because it's I, I've done it myself, and I I like how it makes me feel. Um, but I also think that like sauna comparative, I like to use this with the sauna. There's a company called Herbalix. They do salves. Um, I, I really recommend that for people that have they've worn an antiperspirant for a long time. Um, it helps draw the aluminum out. It helps vasodilate the skin and then pull the aluminum out and then we excrete it. Um, I really like coffee enemas. Um, you know, you don't go crazy with it. Just like once or twice a week, um, stimulate the glutathione naturally <laughs> once a week, you know. <laughs> oh, some people do like three times a day. I'm like, you guys are, it's too much. Yeah. I mean, it's all about balance. You can't overdo this stuff, right? But I do think it's a great way to not only clean out the system, um, you know, years of mucoid plaque and whatnot, but uh, stimulate the glutathione naturally in the liver. Um, but it, the final thing I'll say, and then I'll answer any questions you guys have, is that it's 70% 70, 70 of this is lifestyle, diet, water, EMFs, uh, mold. I mean, it's the basic. So I really believe that water, water is like the number one you got to get. And it's like, it could probably be the best investment you make in your health is a, is a good full home system, water filtration system. Um, but foods. Um, you know, organ meats have changed my life. I mean, it's just the most nutrient dense food on the planet. Um, eggs, raw milk, uh, cilantro, I love. Um, tamarind paste can be really good for fluoride detox. Uh, there's a study out there. You guys can email me. I can send that over. Um, really interesting stuff. Really, really interesting stuff. So um, that's that's all I got today. Um, I have a podcast. I don't really record too much, but every now and then when I feel inspired, I put something on there. Um, but yeah, any questions? Yeah. Yeah, it's can, you can buy it. You can buy it online from Jeff's website. Oh, for children? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I pretty much believe so. Um, I mean, you got to be careful anytime with pregnancies and stuff. But for kids, um, I mean, you can ask, I would reach out to Jeff. He's got some kids that have really severe autism and Jeff Hoyt, he's the founder of uh, Zeo, Zeolite Labs. Um, he's told me that he has these autistic kids that it's the only thing that works for them. They'll take like six scoops a day and the days they don't take it, they just, they, they like freak out. It's the only thing that keeps them calm. And it's really interesting because it comes in a powder and Jeff, um, you know, Zeolite is a scammy industry. There is a lot of scammers out there. The liquids, the nanos. Um, he just recorded a podcast with uh, um, Matt Blackbird from MitoLife, and he talks all about this. So I'll let I'll save that for him. But uh, I like Jeff's because when you it's powder and you mix it with water, and it's so funny. Like I was at the Denver airport like a couple weeks ago, and I had the Z light in my bag, and you know they freaking pretend it's like I had a gun on me, right? And they freaking you know so, pat me down like everything. I'm like in line thirty minutes. So the, the the bomb guy is like looking at my Z-Light. He's like testing it, right? He's like at this lab kit and everything. And, you know, I'm like just standing here like, you know, it's just Z-Light. It's a heavy metal detox, like for, for Pete's sake. Anyway, long story short, he's like adding all these things to it. And I'm like, oh, give me some. Like, anyway, he like taps his butt into foot. It's, it's like it's like it's alive. And I don't, he added, I don't know what he added, but it added all these colors and stuff. But it, the Z-Light, it's. There's something about it. And the ancient Romans actually used to, they had these big water troughs, the canals to, to siphon water across the land. And they would put the zeolite uh, at the beginning and they let the water pass through it and it'll settle down. And they would use this in their, to clean the water from any of the lead in the metal. So it's been around for a while. I mean, it is a, it's a classification of an element. Um, some people get concerned about like, um, you know, does this have heavy metals in it? Is there definitely, you know, it's a it, everything has got metals in it to some degree, and Jeff would say that it's not about. I mean, everything's got metals in it. It but it acts as like a um, honeycomb matrix. It's like a it has this swap mechanism. So it, your body is not absorbing that metal, but it's latching onto the metal, other metals, and then getting it out of the body. Yeah, Hoyt. Yeah, H O Y T. He's got all kinds of information out there. It's he's an awesome dude. He won't be at the booth tomorrow. You have to come to uh you'll have to come back for the biohacker show to see him, but we have a booth together. And I've tried everything and I, that's why I like the zeolite, because I really 
I mean, I've seen that it works. Yeah. Um, thing and not why the thing Yeah. So the blood type. Um, so this was developed by a Brazilian scientist in early two thousands, like two thousand three. Um, before they launched this company, um, they did all these tests, right? They did all, all the experiments. They had to determine the reference ranges. And thank God they did that then because I don't know if you would be able to de determine reference ranges now after COVID. People were so messed up. So at the time, it was great. But um, the founder or the scientist realized that all the different blood types have different RH antigens, proteins. So they reflect and absorb light differently, similar to like an atomic emission spectra. So I've done experiments with this, and when you, I can almost, I can almost pinpoint when somebody's blood type is wrong because you'll see like just sporadicness in the report. And some of the elements aren't that way. Some doesn't make that big of a difference, but some of them it really does. Yeah. So the Aldon code kits are um, are a good, way, fast way to determine blood type. And the same marketing though. Yeah. No, not really. I mean, you know, I read a book way back when by Dr. Diodamo, E. Red Pure Type. Um, I read that book and I was in school and I eat tons of meat. And I was like, I don't. My dad's always told me that your blood can have imprints. You can be an A, but you can be imprinted with O. I don't know if that's just a bunch of hogwash that he told me because he wishes he was an O. Sorry. Yeah, they don't talk about that, do they? Like, I just thought it was just one blood type. Yeah, not leaving the game. Yeah. 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 Anyway, there yeah, there can be some complexities, but I I don't actually. I don't see that much. Um it's it just there's so many factors with this. And I really believe a lot of it is water, food, air, chemicals. Um, when I see the sulfur really high, when I see the sulfur really high. Uh, it's usually a sign that the liver is compromised, and it's not from metals. It's usually from chemicals. Um, Dr. John Gamble educated me on that one. Um, but no, I don't see any. I don't see a lot of trends. Um, I really I look at the questionnaire more to really determine because everybody's got different stories. Everybody's got different environments and different lifestyles and different. You know, I came from this. I came from that. So I don't. I don't see much correlation enough to talk about it. Say it one more time. What kind of when? Yeah. So I do all the trainings. Um, we have a members portal, which has it's like a resource database. So it has everything you'd ever want to know. I've, I've created lots of different guides. Um, we send you one of these books, the test interpretation manual for a Lego scan. John's done over 4,000 tests in Australia. Um, this book's incredible. Um, but basically what we do is I'll, I'll, I train everybody via Zoom. Um, and you know, you'll do some tests. We'll go through sample tests like this. Uh, it's, you know, it, it's not rocket science is if you're a health practitioner and you have a general understanding of this stuff, I like to keep it real simple. We're looking for toxicities and we're looking for deficiencies and we're looking for the root cause of toxicities and we're looking to, maybe there's a root cause of deficiency that's not a toxicity. It could be they're not eating good. So, you know, it, we're, that, that's the baseline of it. And then there's all, you know, you can take it really deep. Um, but a lot of the times I like to really identify the root cause of what's causing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the resources are included. Yeah. So my goal is, you know, my goal is to make sure that you're comfortable interpreting these tests because I fail if that's not the case, right? Like we don't just want practitioners to come on board and not use it. We want people to come on board. They're going to use it, educate people and help people. So that's ultimately the goal. So if, if you don't feel like you are comfortable interpreting this after a couple of weeks, then I didn't do a job. And then I'm not happy. No, the machine is, uh, I'm going to be, the, for those of you that be here tomorrow, um, I'll be doing tests and the machine's there. Um, takes 30 seconds. Just need to know your blood type, height, weight, birthday. Right. Yeah, you don't want to have lotions. Some lotions can have um, actually silver, but some creams and stuff. So you, you don't have any lotions. Wash your hands with soap and water, um, and that's pretty much it. 